Hey, everybody, welcome to another edition of the podcast. Man, we got a good one here for you today. I'm not going to run up too much time, but uh, I want to go over some fun and unique topics today. I'm Rick, and I'm joined by Big Show again. Show, how you doing today, man? I'm good. How are you, sir? Oh, not too bad. Um, trying to wind this school year down. Uh, my youngest son, his last track meet is Thursday. So that's one thing we don't have to worry about for a while until the next sport. What other sports does he like to play? Well, he's talking about football. His height and okay. weight, I'm probably going to say no for a minute. Uh, and golf. But he's not eligible for golf until he's a freshman. And he's only in the sixth grade. Yeah, my uh, my daughter, she's a freshman, and she just uh, we take her out to the Heart of America golf course there in Kansas City, Missouri, and she's doing the uh, beginner course of teaching her how to play the game. So she seems to like it so far. Well, that's good. Um, I'm hoping that whatever he chooses, and I'll backtrack on the football thing too. I'll include that. Uh, I told him right now, with your size, you can be a kicker. So if he's willing to do that, uh, I can't see him running through an offensive line uh, right now. How big is he? Um, he? He's tall, but he's thin. He only weighs 75 pounds. So you play corner. He could, but uh, if that's a big he receiver. Play, he he could play corner and make business decisions. <laughs> Okay, talking about Deion Sanders type stuff. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if I want him gambling with the placement of the ball because he could end up getting burnt quite a bit. We'll have to nickname him Toast. Okay. <laughs> so check it out, show. Uh, first topic I want to talk about as far as movie franchises, what do you think are some of the worst uh, movies in franchises? It could be the sequel. It could be the third one, fourth or fifth one, if there's other ones. I've got three off the top of my head um, that came to mind as soon as I saw this. And, and my first one is Alien 3. Um, I know that's a hugely successful franchise when it comes to Alien and Predator and all that. But that third one was trash. Uh, the other one that I was thinking about, um, Star Trek, and I know we're Star Wars guys, so, you know, please don't blast us public just because we're Star Wars guys. Star Trek movies are good, too, but Star Trek V kind of sucked. And also... Some of them are good. Yeah. Any Scream movie after the first and second one, we didn't need them, because now you're just repeating everything. Well... Uh, I will um, disagree with you on that. Uh, the yes, the the actual plot is the same, you know. Obviously, somebody, but Scream Three was pretty good. You said anything after two, right? Yeah, one and two. I guess it's because I don't really remember the plots or what happened in any of the successive ones. Well. And the first one was, <laughs> spoiler alert for anybody that hasn't seen these, uh, the first one was the killer uh, was her boyfriend and his friend. The second one was the boy's mother and yeah. somebody she recruited. Well, the third one was her brother, her half-brother. See, I didn't even remember And that he part. was in Hollywood. And he was in Hollywood. Is that the that one where was, they were mimicking? They were like redoing the whole Stab movie or whatever. Yeah, okay. I, now I remember that one. I remember that one. Yeah. I guess I sort of blocked yeah. it out. because That one was pretty good. Four. I actually just watched four for the first time around Halloween. Really? It wasn't, it wasn't really bad. But then the new one, Scream 5, out, I haven't seen it yet. Because I'm just like, really, like, who else is there to kill anybody? Now, has that come out yet? Yeah, it's actually on Paramount Plus, I think, or one of those streaming services. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, I know on a previous episode, me and Kevin talked about streaming services, and um, it's cable all over again. 
you remember the high prices we were paying for cable. If you get more than four or five streaming services, you're paying the cable fees. So it, oh, it yeah. puts you right back plus where you started. If you, plus if you sign on to one of them for live television, now you're just paying more yeah. than what you were doing. But that's a whole nother show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't want to get into that. Um, now, going back to what I said about Alien 3, I'm not saying that the franchise should have stopped there because the fourth one was pretty good. And um, although I wasn't a big fan of Alien versus Predator, it was an interesting concept. I think Hollywood kind of like took it a little bit too far. And the newer Star Trek movies have also been good. So, you know, pick your poison, six and a half dozen the other. Uh, some are good, some are not. Those are just ones off the top of my head that, nah, I can live without. Um, now, I know you said you liked the third screen movie. Was there any, uh, any movie sequels that didn't sit well with you? Oh, yeah. Episode 7, 8, 9 of Star Wars all sucked. <laughs> wow. Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> I, 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 I just, they sucked. Um, now, I'm not going to say that they sucked, but I will say that there were some interesting choices made by Kathleen Kennedy, and I do hold Kathleen Kennedy solely responsible for dropping the ball on those movies. They had so much potential. Yeah, I can say that those three blew movies it. all could be up and for award at the ABNs. Wow. Yeah, they ruined it. <laughs> and like I said, they could all be uh, up for awards at the ABNs. Um, what's, what's some more? Like, and I'll probably get bashed about this maybe, but, you know, anything after Rocky Four was kind of, eh, you know? Um, you know, after the... I, the, I, I kind of like Rocky Balboa. I know Rocky Five didn't sit well with me. The whole Tommy Morrison thing was a joke, but Rocky Balboa yeah, kind of took it back to more realisticness, you know. And the fact that he didn't win the fight, there's no way that the box. Right, but there's the only exception to that is there's no way the boxing commission was going to let a 187 year old man box Antonio Carver. <laughs> you know, really, that, that's true. All all because of a video game. However, the spinoffs of them that created Creed are pretty good. Yes, they are. And did you know that there's a third one coming? Yes. That's yes, going to be do. very interesting because um, the actor who plays Creed's son, uh, Michael B. Jordan, will be directing this one himself. Oh, really? I yes. did not know that. Now, that's a slippery slope there. I mean, it's good to see an actor direct something especially if it's a sequel because in my mind because I'm 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 Hollywood centered that's the best thing for an actor because they know the character they played the character in some cases multiple times like he has so it's easier to get back into um the acting chair while you're in the directing chair i know sylvester sloan did that a couple times himself i think he directed rocky 3 and rocky 4 so I get that, and mm -hmm. I, I totally don't mind that. I, I don't really like to see actors direct something that um, is new territory for them, because sometimes things can right. go horribly wrong. Not saying they do all the time, but sometimes. I mean, you never want to bite off more than you can chew, especially if you're a big-name actor with a big reputation, and then you come out swinging and fail. True. And my other one to add to the list is anything after the first Tremors movie. Tremors oh. 2, Tremors 3, all that shit suck. If Heather heard you say that now, that is a guilty pleasure for her, the Tremors movies. I don't mind the first one. She loves all of them, even the stupid later ones that don't make sense. I mean, um, as soon as they look like oversized 
chickens walking around with two feet. That's yeah. where I was. I was. It was a wrap. Yeah. What What did they call them? Ass blasters or? <laughs> yes. Yes. Some stupid. <laughs> but yeah. No. Anything after the first tremors, I'm good. Yeah. It. It, it is. It. What well, they were interesting. We'll just put it that way. Um. Real quick, let's jump to this second topic because we had talked about it uh, offline. What the hell is dirty soda? And, you know, I was reading an article and it just said dirty soda turns trendy with help from TikTok. And I guess uh, these women are on TikTok uh, promoting dirty sodas, which are carbonated drinks spiked with creams or syrups or other add-ins. And it says, uh, because they had a TikTok moment, it propelled them, some say, by pop star Olivia Rodrigo, I don't really know who that is, who was photographed with a cup uh, full of the uh, pebble ice treat. Uh, and it says, Mormon mommies too can lay claim to uh, fueling the Utah-based trend. And it started way back in the day, for those of us of a certain age, who watched Laverne and Shirley, remember she used to drink milk and Pepsi. And while that was never a thing in my house, um, that's right. I, I get it because we like to experiment. Like I was telling you as kids, we used to have what was called a suicide where we just mixed all different flavors of all different drinks together to see what we can come up with. And to this day, I am also guilty. Um, you know how some of the drink machines have little flavoring where you can press the button and get flavor in them. I was a big fan of orange vanilla Coke, which was just a seasonal one-time thing. It's not out anymore, but I will still get my Coca-Cola and I'll fill it two thirds of the way. Then I'll fill it another third of the day with um, either Fanta orange or high C orange and then add a squirt of vanilla in there just so I could get that same flavor. So I'm guilty of that, but I don't know about putting cream in my soda. I, I, I don't think I can do that. Yeah, probably not. But I mean, I'm sure there's some sort of cream in it anyway, so. Yeah. Um, when you really think about it though, what is it out there that somebody hasn't attempted anyway? Right. And everything's a retread now, so all these youngsters think they're creating something new. They really do. They need to understand. What is new was old. Right. And what's old will be new again. Let's jump back to, uh, we were talking movies. Let's go back to actors. This one intrigued me. The things that actors go through to prep their bodies for roles. And, you know, we hear about it more so with men, especially in these superhero movies, um, or we talked about Sylvester Stallone earlier in the Rocky movies. Uh, everybody knows, you know, his stories of HGH and always being a gym rat working out. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger is one of them. The Rock, he's currently the big one. He, he gets his body ready for most every, every movie that uh, he comes out with. And then you got some lesser known actors in that department that make these crazy transformations and they just get really jacked for movies. And because I'm a movie guy, I do know that a lot of that's Hollywood trickery with lighting and things like that. But body wise, uh, I'm going to name Hugh Jackman as one good example because everybody knows that last Wolverine movie when he was just jacked and veins were popping and everything. And he admitted his secret on that. I believe it is three days before they shoot that scene. He cuts his water intake in half. Two days before that scene, he'll cut it down in half again. And then the day before he shoots uh, any shirtless scene, he'll have no liquid whatsoever. So when he comes on set, he looks very dry, veiny, uh, it just looks like his skin is shrink wrapped on him. And that's a, I've heard from a lot of medical people, that's a very dangerous thing to dehydrate yourself like that. Um, 
I'm sure with his money and his knowledge, people around him, he, he's probably under constant supervision. But the kids that follow these stars, they don't have that. And they still go out and they try to do that. They try to mimic that. And I think that that can be a dangerous phenomenon. Your thoughts? And I so was is he like, not eating either? Um, I think he still eats. He'll get his, uh, I don't know if it's, it, if, if he cuts out carbs, but he'll get his other nutrients in just so that he like, can, wouldn't your body pull the moisture from the food that you eat? It would. It so little, he probably, it, he probably doesn't eat anything that has a lot of moisture in it. For example, gotcha. he might eat nuts or something like Freeze that. He probably, stuff, yeah. Right. Gotcha. That makes sense. Maybe I should try that. Uh, again that's pretty <laughs> dangerous that's, you go into dehydration like that that's pretty dangerous and, and yeah, i've been there I, done that i've heard of stallone doing that too and they both reported that there's like the whole day on the set they've got headaches and they're irritable i'd be irritable too if i'm you know dehydrating nothing in 36 hours heck yeah, yeah. And, 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 you know, Stallone is a legend when it comes to that. I've heard stories about uh, him eating like a banana or whatever and 20 cups of coffee, and that's it for the entire day while shooting a, a Rocky movie. Um, the things that these guys put their bodies through, not only is it dangerous at the time, what does that do to them later on, you know? And, and right. I'm pretty I mean, sure they're taking something, too. And when you say that, I think about what Stallone looked like in Rocky IV when he was in the ring to fight Dolph Lundgren at the end of the movie. Mm -hmm. And he was, like, super chiseled. And you're, his his skin was, like, super tight. Like, so I bet you that's... that's that was the movie did. where he had 20 cups of coffee a day and, you know, not much else. Gotcha. Yeah, he was, he was pretty, he was pretty cut then. Yeah, he well, was. Well, him and Dolph both were. Oh yeah, um, just beast. I mean, I, if I if I had the intestinal fortitude and and the will to work out like that, maybe, but I don't. That's why I look the way I do. So, you know. Yeah, and but they've been doing it for so long. They have a nice foundation. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Yeah. With and, me, I got to chisel away a lot of water. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm no prize either. Believe me, I, I'm, I'm small, but, but I'm, flab, I'm flabby in places I shouldn't be and, 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 and tiny in places that I, I, I could work out and get bigger. So, you know, um, and it's really not healthy for a smaller guy to have a beer gut, you know. Um, yeah. But that's a whole nother subject for another time, too. That's a whole nother show. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. We're just we're just grabbing topics for later shows. I love yeah. it. All this material for a later date. So, hey, um, you know, springboarding from Rocky to real boxers, um, I had asked you your top 10 boxers of all time. And the reason why I brought them up, I had read... And I want to pull it up to make sure that I've got it right. It's from foxsports.com. It's their list of the top 10 boxers of all time. So I'm going to give you their list. And then I'm going to tell you who I'd replace on that list. At 10, they had Julio Cesar Chavez. At nine, they had Oscar De La Hoya. At eight, they had Archie Moore. Seven, Joe Lewis. Six, Bernard Hopkins. Five, Sugar Ray Leonard. Four, Muhammad Ali. Three, Carlos Monzon. Two, Manny Pacquiao. And one, Floyd Mayweather Jr. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Do me one th favor. Can you hit me back uh, 10 through 6 again? Read those to me. Yeah, uh, Julio Cesar Chavez, Oscar De La Hoya, 
Archie Moore is at number eight. Joe Lewis is at number seven. And Bernard Hopkins was number six. Okay. Um, it's not a bad list. It's not a bad list. But are you really going to tell me that Floyd Mayweather is better than Muhammad Ali? I got, I got three fighters in front of Floyd on my list. Um, I don't even have Floyd on my list. Why is Tyson not on Fox Sports list? Mike Tyson right. should be on there. Yep. And if you're going to put Sugar Ray Leonard on here, oh, I'm sorry. They don't have Sugar Ray Leonard. They have Sugar Ray Robinson. My fault. My fault. Sugar Ray Robinson, who they have. Robinson, okay. But still, I got Thomas the Hitman Hearns on here. I got Marvin Hagler on here. Roy Jones Jr. should be on here. Hmm. Um. Where's George Foreman? That dude's a legend. You know, I got Foreman at number 10 on my list. I have Roberto Duran. Duran's not even at, on my list. They don't, they don't even have Duran on here. Yeah, how Duran's gonna, not on my list. How are you going to put Chavez on here and not have Duran on here? A much better fighter. Chavez nor Duran is on my list. Do you have Evander Holyfield? I do not. Mm. I have Holyfield. I have Pernell Whitaker so, on this so list. So why don't we do this? Why yes. don't we go? I'll say what you say. Either I'll go my 10 and then you'll respond and then we'll go our nines together all the way down. Yeah, that sounds good. All right. Who so you got to say? George Foreman. I have Roberto Duran. And number nine, I have Pacquiao. I have Holyfield. Similar fighters, really. I mean, you know, in yeah. their careers. So I can see that. Now, eight, I have a tie between uh, Hagler and Sweet Pea Whitaker. And I have Whitaker at number eight. Uh, number seven, De La Hoya. I have Hearns. Number six, I got Joe Frazier. And I've got George Foreman. Mm -hmm. Number five, I got Floyd Mayweather. I've got Marvin Hagler. Nice. Uh, number four, Roy Jones Jr. I've got Sugar Ray Leonard. Three, Tyson. My three is Roy Jones Jr. <clears throat> number two for me is Joe Lewis. My number two is Mike Tyson. And number one is Ali. As I, Ali. I think our list is a hell of a lot closer than Fox Sports list. So, oh, yeah. Uh, the people at Fox Sports got some explaining to do. When you leave yeah, Tyson yeah. off the list and you got uh, Ali way down the list, something ain't right. Yeah. yeah. I I mean, honestly, I couldn't think of a fighter more, you know, that's better than Ali. I mean, he's at top of the list, period. So, and I put Lewis just slightly in front of Tyson. All right. For those of you that don't like boxing, we'll get out of the sports world here. I want to close it out real quick with this. I want to ask you a dual question. What is the most expensive thing you ever bought that was kind of not worth it, but at the same time, in contrast, what was the least expensive purchase that you cannot live without? Uh, they don't have to be bad purchases because neither one of mine are bad. And I'm going to go with those right now. If you look behind me, you see nothing but hot toys. I, I, I love my hot toys. It, it's a hobby that I don't need. They are quite expensive, some of them. But I get enjoyment out of it. At the same time, the cabinets that they are in are just $50 or $60 IKEA Detoffs. Very inexpensive, yet they hold those expensive items. So it kind of works out. Right. Well, I too can go with the probably the most expensive thing. I mean, to me, they're worth it. But as you can see, all of my Chiefs memorabilia here on the wall, these are all autographed pictures, mm. you know, certified uh, certificate of authenticity on all of them. Um, nice. So, you know, that that's my ex most expensive thing, but it doesn't really do me any any good. Um. Uh, but you get now, enjoyment out of it. Oh, I, yes. Every time exactly. I'm here, every time. Yes. Love them. Uh, 
and, and probably wouldn't separate with them no matter what, how much money you want to give me. And I got some good non chiefs too. Like, I know you can't see them on the wall, but I got uh, Barry Sanders and Earl Campbell and Mike Singletary and Jerome Bettis, guys like that, Thurman Thomas, Tim Brown. Ricky Williams, Art Monk, all those are signed yeah. over there on that wall. Hey, I like that. That's respect for the game, you know. Yes, respect sir. For the game. Um, now, the contrast, you know, the least expensive purchase that I cannot live without, um, <clears throat> probably I would say I have a couple of them, but they're more for my fishing trips. Um, I have some automatic rod setters. So when I have multiple poles out there, I put one of my poles on this automatic uh, spring-loaded rod setter, and when the hook or when the fish grabs it, it, it automatically pops up and sets the nice. hook for me. Okay. So, I mean, I've, I've caught quite a few fish with it that I would have lost if I was away from the pole while I'm, you know, walking to the car or whatever. So, hey, that's mine. And, and, and that's the thing, you know, it, it shows that, you know, some things don't have to cost a whole lot of money, but they're so worth it. And, and even though we get some things that might be overpriced to some, as long as we get some enjoyment out of it ourselves, they, they kind of can be worth it. Yes, sir. Now, before we cut it off here, um, do you have anything before we go out? I do have one thing, if you don't mind me doing a, a public service announcement here. Go for it. And it's not really a public service announcement. And I'm sure that, you know, maybe somebody's watching, maybe not. But, you know, I work from home. And today around 7-Eleven, some old man, I'll, I'll keep this very nice, uh, pulled his vehicle into my driveway, walked up into my yard and grabbed some stuff and put in his car and took off. Mm. My Google doorbell camera picked up everything, but it alerted me 30 seconds too slow. Otherwise, I would have caught him at my front door. Yeah. But I didn't make it. And as I was coming out the door, he was uh, pulling off down parallel. Yeah. Um, I did post it on Facebook. The video's on there. Anybody that knows me, take a look at it. If you happen to know the guy, I have a police report. Man, just let me know. What he took may not be substantial to some, but it was something that my mother gave me. And for those that don't know, my mom just passed in January. So initially, I took it very hard <laughs> that I couldn't catch him. But I'm also kind of listening to my mom and what she would say. She would say, you have to let go and let God, which is what I'm doing, but. Right. I, I kind of wish I could have practiced one of my jujitsu techniques on his neck this morning. <laughs> well, I will definitely be praying that, you know, this guy gets found out and also you get your stuff back. Yeah, I probably won't see it again, but, you know, karma, karma will always win. So that's what I was going to say. What goes around comes around. Yes, sir. So somewhere down the line, he will get his. Let's just hope. And it's I always say at the end of these shows to love on each other. And I would like to show the man some love, like really <laughs> come back. <laughs> hey, well, hey, like I said, I'm going to be praying for you and I appreciate you, brother. Uh, yes, I'm going to go ahead and cut it short today. Uh, get ready to mess with the boy. Like I said, his final track meet is Thursday. So we're going to go over some pointers and in the evening with family. All right. All y'all stay positive, stay blessed. Ryan, thanks for coming on again. Appreciate you, man. All right, man. We'll see you next week. All right. You take care. See ya. See ya.